Hi fun loving Sagittarius and welcome to my channel Zodiac Love Tarot. I'm Jennifer Winters and this is your Sagittarius 2020 Astrology Yearly Tarot Forecast. And we have my friend Louie here with us tonight and he's being a little ham so I'm trying to you know calm him down a little bit right now. So anyways if you haven't seen my channel before you could check out my November and December readings. I am new to uh, YouTube so there's some good information in there about karmic cleansing so that you can go into 2020. Uh, it started off with a bang and I'm really hoping that a lot of the stuff I talked about in December for the those of you who are coming back to my channel really resonated with you and it's really going to help. So let's just go right down to the cards. I am doing what's called a celestial tarot wheel of life spread okay and this spread goes from january all the way through december and it goes through your houses and we will be talking about the planets that are going to be transiting through your uh, sign of sagittarius and also through your other houses so let's just get started shall we the first thing i want to do though is light a candle for all my sagittarius so that you'll have some peace going into 2020 in a peaceful year because if nothing else you definitely want peace and then I'm going to write this light this romance candle because I also want you to have some romance going on who doesn't like romance right okay so I'm putting my Sagittarius energy in here and I'm really feeling right now that my Sagittarius are hopeful and wanting basically to get some abundance going in the year 2020. I feel that relationships are kind of on your back burner right now is kind of what I'm feeling. Although we do have some Venus retrograde coming in your seventh house in May, so that may be also something that I'm already feeling, Sagittarius. Um, but I feel mostly like you're really trying to uh, set yourself up this year really good financially so that's the energy that I'm getting I'm getting this hopeful energy and I'm putting it into the cards and now let's just see where they go so January February March April May June July August September October November December Ooh, that December card that has something I don't know there's some energy in there right it's 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 interesting energy I'm almost afraid to know what that is <laughs> I'm hoping it's something good because I'm feeling this card right here has a lot of a lot of fire on it okay so let's find out what's going on in January first we have Saturn and we have Pluto conjunct meaning that Saturn is the the planet that teaches us things right and Pluto makes us shed things that don't serve us and make make us re become reborn with ourselves or to start something over or just to rise from the ashes but Saturn is the one who's like the big father who's telling everyone this is what you need to learn to get your abundance and Pluto is also a planet of abundance and so uh, it's 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 of hitting gems and things like that so let's just see what's going to happen in January you also have a lunar eclipse it's in your eighth house which immediately has something to do with either intimacy or finance so let's just see what happens okay we got the Hydra and the four of wands and that was up right for you so this could mean that you're that you are either moving at some point in January or you've just moved and things are seeming like very chaotic for you right now the Hydra card can is a victory card but it also can be something that's uh, very chaotic and it's hard to handle so maybe you've just had recently had a move or maybe you've recently stopped a job or maybe you've recently started a new project or something in January and you're hoping that it pays off and this project is very close to your heart basically or this move has been very close to your heart something but let me start over something is causing this chaos though because it's new and it's scary in some sort of way but this is a victory card you have to remember that so whatever it is that you're feeling in January this this chaos you're definitely gonna gonna be able to focus and get it together and um, work out 
this new move, this new job, this new hobby, this new romance, you're going to be able to work it out. This chaos will go away. Okay, so that is what Saturn is telling us right there, conjunct Pluto, is that you need to basically squash the chaos. Okay, and you will be victorious. That's what's, what it's telling me. And that's interesting because kind of chaos is uh, Saturn's, <laughs> chaos is Saturn's uh, father, basically. And this also is, I keep picking this card up because I'm getting a lot of energy coming off of it and it's scattered. So it's making me scattered brained here, but it has some Leo energy on there too, telling me that you have the strength to do this and some earth energy. Okay, so that is a really good energy for you to have to become grounded in this situation. Okay, Whew. on to February, because if I take too much time on these, you guys, please stay with me. I'll go around this as fast as I can. I don't want to lose you, but there's going to be some interesting stuff, especially here in December. I don't know what it's about, though. All right, so now we're heading on to February. I don't see anything transiting, like any... Um, planets but we will see what the message is anyways okay so you got the alresha card and this is also upright for you meaning that whatever it is whatever chaos that you've been finding in your life in january this is telling me that you need to just cut bonds with things that don't serve you and that seven of cups and this pisces uh, reflection here is telling me that as long as you think about the things that um, are disorganized in your mind in January or the things that you just feel um, like there's just so much to chew, so much to bite off. you got to go in bite sizes. You need to make your list. You need to make your schedule. You need to prioritize everything on the list and tell yourself what is going to serve you, what isn't going to serve you. And this is also in your second house of finance and substance. So if you could just get your... Uh, your list made and prioritized and checked off in February that is going to tell me that whatever if that was a new project that you started or even a new house that you bought and you just have a lot of expenses for it or if it's also like could be I think it's less relationship now that I'm seeing these two cards together because as the story unfolds I can kind of find, feel what's going on but this is definitely cutting bonds of things that don't serve you right here that's the Alresha is the bond between the two Pisces and that's what that message is about okay so now we're on to um, March and in March we have Saturn coming into your third house and also here this this wheel of life is your third house so we definitely gonna have a message about communication right here oh great we have the mutable earth sign right here and this is basically a young prince of Pentacles who is, you know, offering up this value to you. And it's saying that here is the start of whatever you need. It's almost like when when I'm looking through this story here so far, it's, it's, it's like you just need a little bit extra something, some extra money, some um, like a loan maybe, or just a co-signer or something neat someone needs to present you with something to get you by um, and then also you need to communicate that with someone because Saturn is telling me that with this mutable earth card you need to be basically adaptable you need to uh, have this rooted sense of self and sense of want and need and then communicate that to other people and then you're going to be presented with this value with this opportunity and look at this beautiful goddess here that you know he's uh, the prince is presenting this pinnacle to of this start of something you know really uh wonderful and and brand new so i think this is going to be a really good card for you coming up for your communication in uh, march okay so that's a good card very lucky there and now we have in April in your fourth house we have Jupiter and Pluto conjunct and that on this wheel is your fourth house but they're also in your the actual transit is going through your second house so that's again the house of substance earnings and income and that has to do with your family and your emotional well-being in this particular situation so let's see what you got all right, you got the Leo upright, the strength card, 
So this is the blessing that Jupiter is bringing you. You are going to be in April just very strong. You're going to have a lot of courage and you're going to shine. You're going to be magnetic. Um, I think maybe this blessing too that you received here um, in March may be something that just sets you up for success. And then I also see, I also feel that with the home and family, you're going to be stronger because you now have a foothold and that is going to help with your family. It's going to help you feel more secure and a lot stronger. And then Jupiter giving you this um, really amazing card and all this really amazing messages is going to tell me that is telling me that Pluto is also going to be giving you more abundance in April and it'll have to do around the house or the family. So um, I'm almost thinking here that it was like a new project or a house that was uh, bought or something is going on where you just get you catch a break, but you've trained yourself to break these bonds here, too. And now you have all this strength and it's really going to help you emotionally and it's going to help you financially. So that is really good. So so it's it doesn't show me so much the showering of abundance as much as it does that maybe the abundance already happened and now you have the strength from it. So let's go on to May and find out this is your house of creativity. And this is where Venus goes in retrograde for you and also in your seventh house of romance so let's check it out so you got here and it's upside down for you the devil card in the capricorn card right here okay so that's what is going on with uh, venus in retrograde basically what this is telling me is to save your money don't squander it away because you know things if um this Capricorn energy being upside down is telling me it's about squandering and you don't want to squander your money away in May. <laughs> don't squander your money away in May. <laughs> this is basically what this is telling me. And that's Venus in retrograde. And then also in your seventh house, this is which is the house of uh, romance. It's saying that that's going to help your relationship, not squandering your money away, because maybe the person that you're with is also um, relying on you to kind of keep the relationship. Both of you guys are probably contributing money. And so your partner is thinking like, please don't squander the money that we have away because we need it. And if you get into a situation where you do spend a lot of your money in May, it, it may <laughs> um have an effect on your relationship so just be careful there okay and if you're gonna plan a trip let me see maybe something will come up but may may not be the time for you to plan a trip because i think you're gonna need to be saving a little bit more there and then you need to use your creativity in this situation to save that money so get creative um you know things that you splurge on make sure you go back and see if there's something cheaper that you can buy or some way to do something cheaper or uh, just to have hobbies that are cheaper at that time. Something going on there. Whew, okay, got to move on. So we're in June now and we're talking about your routines, your services, your rituals, that sort of thing. And you have actually in June a lunar and a solar eclipse. The lunar eclipse is in your first house and the solar eclipse is in your eighth house. So that's telling me, again, some finances in the first house is basically your personality towards it. How are your rituals going? Okay, so you got the magician and you got it upside down. So this is telling me um, that your rituals, you have this beautiful capability of making magic happen. But when it's upside down like this, it's telling me that you're not using all of your talents. You're not using all of your talents to keep your rituals going. I think maybe that could have something to do with that first house personality thing. Is just maybe Sagittarius, you're, you're not focused. Something's out of line and you need it to be back in line and you need to be able to have this card upright for you, especially in June, get your rituals together. And that way you can 
perform some magic and you need to be expedient in that magic. That's what this Mercury card is telling me here and it has this Virgo energy on it as well telling me that you need to analyze things um, and refocus your energy so that you can be standing upright with this guy right here with the magician. So here we go, you know, May and June seem like it could be just a warning. The warning is coming just to tell you, you know, that you want to make sure you save your money and you want to make sure you analyze things expediently and that you create this so you can create this magic for yourself. Okay, so then in July, let's see what's going on. You have Saturn going into retrograde in your second house. Um, again, you know, this is the house of partnership and it's mixed with money again. So let's find out what's going on here. Okay, so you got, and it's upside down. You have a lot of upside down cards. I'm kind of shocked, um, which is like, I think Saturn has these lessons just sort of mixed into all of these things. But this card is the world. So these messages that are upside down, and then with it coming to fruition here, we I hope to see some more cards upright. I think you did have one or two upright here. I think it was one. But this one here is your uh, chance right here to circle back and clear up your finances, uh, tie up loose ends, keep that strength going, um, using that Mercury energy. And then this is basically, you know, a Saturn card. And that's where we're at right here is in July, Saturn comes back and he's basically taking, you know, this sickle and he's harvesting everything that you've done from January to now. And it's expecting you to uh, cut out the chaos, get hyper focused, get rid of the bonds that don't serve you, uh, use this wonderful gift that's coming to you. Uh, from the Prince of Pentacles, that strength that's coming to you, and then make sure you hang on to your money and you use all of your talents to your best ability. And then in July, if you're able to do all of that, Saturn is going to change your world, okay? Change it so much. It's going to be amazing, okay? Amazing. So now I'm hoping to see, and maybe that's why this card right here is just so important, Ooh, I'm hoping to see what's going on. Now we're going into August, and I feel like I want to just kind of speed up a little bit so we can see what's going on. You don't have any transits in August, but you have this intimacy going on. And yes, the here of fat. Basically, I already see these cards turning upright for you. It's feeling better for you. This card makes you super desirable. You did hang on to your money. You did do the right thing. Um, she's got all this Taurus energy. She put those roots down. She, uh, you were able to listen to the lessons that were taught to you here by the hair of fat. You're able to use your wisdom and you're just reaping the benefits. You're standing pretty, you're sitting pretty, things are going good for you. And you have all this Venus love for your intimacy and your relationship got stronger. You were able to pull it out of the hat. Sagittarius pull it out of the hat so I'm feeling it I'm feeling it it's it's already really good okay September we have uh, Mars going in retrograde so let's see what's going on this is the house of foreign travel maybe you didn't get to take that vacation because you were so um, you know financially astute the whole year I don't know if you're gonna get any travel with and especially with Mars and retrograde but let's see Okay, you've got the Cetus card, and it's the Two of Wands. This tells me you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait. Um, this That's what this card is, really, is, you know, you need to wait. And it's, your, your plans are going to be on hold for a little while, but not for too long, okay? Not for too long. So that's okay, though, because, you know, it looks like you had to make some sacrifices, and I think it's still going to pay off. It really is. Okay, so we're moving into October. So let's see what October has. You don't have any transits, but this uh, card is in your house of career. So let's just find out 
Okay, so you got the Five of Pentacles, all right? And that is the uh, Ari Danris card. And this Five of Pentacles was upright for you, so we're already seeing that. And this is telling me um, that actually with it being upright, there could be a little bit of financial loss, unfortunately. But I wouldn't worry about this too much because um, there's this Taurus energy there and this Mercury energy there. So I'm thinking that if you, this is, this is hard to, to really deal with when I see this because it does mean financial loss. And I always want to paint things so pretty. But at the same time, like just maybe there's just an expense coming up in October that you weren't expecting. And, you know, that's I have to be maybe the bearer of bad news in that situation. But also it could just be if if you listen to this entire tarot reading, you could avoid this. There could be a way to avoid something. Maybe if, if it's unexpected, maybe not. But if it's something that you could look at, into, say, for instance, in September and just watch your money in October, then maybe there won't be, maybe you'll sidestep this. Okay. And, you know, Sagittarius, you're mutable fire. You're used to sidestepping. So just look out for that. Okay. All right. Well, that's okay because I still feel like December is going to rock it. So I don't know why, but all right. Now we're in November and you have um, a lunar eclipse in your seventh house of relationships. And then this is also your friendship uh, uh, position here. So let's just see what we have. Okay. We got the high priestess and it's upright for you, the high priestess. So basically that's telling me that whatever that all things that you didn't trust you can trust now you have this ability to have this really amazing clarity and this intuition and this insight and maybe a lesson was actually learned here in october i don't know for sure what it is but you're coming out on top of that whatever it was you're coming out victorious because you will be the high priestess it will teach you something that's going to expand your mind and expand your wisdom that is definitely what this means and maybe that's why december is just going to be something i don't know why i just feel this incredible incredible energy but also this being in your house of uh, friends, then I really think that your friends are going to get you through whatever situation um, may have happened in October. And they're going to show you some organization and just you, somehow the dynamic between your friends is going to put make you victorious. And that's a really good card to pull for that, especially coming off of this card which I think you could sidestep. So maybe I wouldn't even be worried about it. Just watch your finances there because it seems like, you know, you're doing so much better this year. You've gotten a lot of blessings from Saturn and Pluto. Um, all right, so let's just see what's going on in December because this is your hidden resources and your spiritual awareness, your imagination, your dreams, your um just re redemption and your strength, everything. And then you also have Saturn and Jupiter returning in your third house. So this could just mean that you're sitting pretty with abundance again. So let's check it out. Oh my gosh, I knew it. This card was just, I was just feeling it so much. You basically have Uranus on your side even though like Jupiter and Saturn's there in your third house and that's your house of communication, um, it seems to me like in December, you're gonna have to take a leap of faith. You're gonna have to use excellent communication. Um, and then Saturn and Jupiter, I think are gonna start you on something that's gonna even be more lucrative than anything you've done this year so far. It seems like you started off struggling with a lot of chaos and a lot of things that you weren't sure you're going to be able to get done. Then you were you got this uh, fresh breath of hope and see you can see it at the bottom there. You got this this wind of hope coming in 
and then you were able to just use a lot of your talents and your strength to save some money. You forego you forego your travel plans, and then maybe you had a little bit of a setback, but then you got this high priestess, which you know revealed to you what you needed to do. Your intuition got stronger, and then that set you up for a brand new opportunity something where you need to take a leap of faith but if this card being upright for you means that you have if you can see on that card here's the fool taking the leap of faith but he's protected by uranus and this is actually again like the father of chaos so you had a couple of chaos situations here but this is saying that you are protected. So whatever endeavor you're taking or whatever's happening in, in December, you're allowed to take this leap of faith and it's going to pay off for you. It's going to be very good for you. It's going to be something brand new and it's going to be refreshing. And it's like a restart, a reboot. And then going into 2021, you are going to basically be able to just go even further in your life in terms of relationship, in terms of money, in terms of new opportunities. So whew, that's a good card to get. I mean, it doesn't, I wish I knew, I wish I knew the whole story, like how that is going to pan out for you. Like, um, I want to know these things, like what's the leap of faith? I mean, I'm like so nosy and curious, Sagittarius. I, I, I hope that you just leave a comment or, some kind of let I mean ugh, I'm getting so worked up because of that reading it was great um so leave a like if you would please or if you don't like the video leave a dislike but any kind of engagement would be really wonderful and then if you uh, leave me a, a, a subscribe hit the subscribe button and then the you know share the video or something of that nature so that other Sagittarius people can get this message out to them and please I, I I'm getting a little worked up because I, I'm really more interested in, in learning what's going on in December with that leap of faith because I have like all this incredible energy. So if you could leave me a comment and tell me what you think it might be or either in December, I know that's a long time from now, in 2020, remember me and tell me what happened because I want to know. And thank you so much for coming to my channel and really try to focus your energy because I'm a little scattered just knowing that there's all that chaos in the beginning and things that you have to like laser focus on and I got a laser focus and I've got to tell you that I'll see you in February and I hope that you like your reading then and to basically look out for that one that's coming up. Okay, thank you, Sagittarius. I really appreciate it. Sorry about that jumbledness, but I, I really do feel the energy in the cards and it's just it's just hard, all right, to uh, focus when I get those kind. But then I have to use this card because to get myself back on track. All right, have a good one. Bye.